Greetings, this is Charles McCall again, and this is lesson number three in a series of uh, 10 or 11 short lessons. Uh, sharing with you, helping you understand about God's great purpose for mankind and specifically where you fit into it. And so we're looking at the Lord's Prayer, which is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9 through 10, where Jesus says, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, our Father in heaven, holy is your name, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is a very important aspect because this is Jesus' sphere of thinking. He's thinking back to Genesis chapter 1 and before the foundation of the earth even to God's original plan. God's original plan has not yet changed during the thousands of years between Adam and Jesus. plan hasn't changed. And as we're going to see uh, from the 2,000 years up until this time and whenever Jesus comes back again, God has not changed his plan. It's been the same plan the whole time. Uh, the, the challenge is we Christians have not seen that plan. We've not, got, not understood it and we've uh, got distracted in what God wants us to do and, and so it's been a bit of a difficulty but this phrase, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the will of God be done in every government office, in every school, in every family, in every place of business, let your will be done, Heavenly Father, as it is in heaven. So that means that heaven is our comparison. Heaven is what we look to to find out how is it supposed to be on earth. So what's it like in heaven? That's the big question. In heaven, there's no sickness. In heaven, there's no war. In heaven, there's no poverty. There's no lack. There's no family problems, there's no divorce, there's no violence, there's no cheating, there's no corruption. But it's people and angels who honor God and who love God and seek to do His will, do do His will, and, uh, uh, and love Him with all of their heart and love others as well. And so this is what it's like in heaven. Let's take a look at that again. What's it like in heaven? It's peaceful. It's uh, not just people floating on clouds, don't, playing harps, don't get confused about that. But there's people who love God, people who honor God, uh, people who will do whatever God wants to do from the bottom of their heart. There's no sickness, there's no lack, there's no poverty, there's no war, there's no family disputes, there's no divorce, uh, there's no financial crisis. That's what God wants it like on earth, my friend. He has no other plan. This is the problem. You can say, oh, Charles, Chuck, that's so big. That's, that's beyond capability. Well, maybe, maybe is, but that should not stop us. Even if we say, oh, Chuck, we can't have it that way in our lifetime. And so what do we do then? We say, just throw God's plan out the window and don't even try? That's not what Jesus wanted his disciples to do. You don't worry. We don't worry about how far we can take this. And by the way, I'm, I'm not propagating that, that every nation would become a Christian nation and every business on the earth would become a Christian business. I'm not propagating that at all. But what I'm saying is that you and I have a mandate from God, a mission from God to bring heaven to earth. And bringing heaven to earth is not just miracles. Bringing heaven to earth is changing ways we think, changing ways that mankind, changing ways that, that uh, uh, the, the government does things, changing ways that a family does things, changing ways that a business does things. So that it's God's way. Do you know, I'm sure you know, that, that God has a way of running government. God has a way of doing business. God has a way of doing family. God has a way of doing relationships. You see, there's man's ways, the ways of the world, and there's God's ways. God has a voice. He has a word. He has something that will bring us success in every aspect of our life. But the problem is as we look around us and we see how terrible things are and how big of a problem, how would you ever turn this thing around? That's not our problem. Actually, I'm going to give you some specific guidelines in one of the final lessons on, on how to do that. But that's not what our problem is. Our issue is we start the process. We start establishing, the next lesson uh, is, is the process of establishing the kingdom of God. But we start the process of establishing the kingdom of God and we create a strategy to establish the kingdom of God and we might see it happen. We'll see it happen a lot further than if we do nothing. And so we establish kingdom of, establishing the kingdom of God 
is the priority for God. It's what the Bible's all about. Now, there are many sub-points in the Bible. There are many sub-issues in the Bible that you will see from Genesis to Matthew to Revelation, the kingdom of God, and establishing the kingdom of God on earth. That is the plan. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. From Genesis chapter 1, I established the kingdom of God, to Daniel chapter 2, to Matthew, and to uh, here we are in Revelation and all in between, the priority of God to establish the kingdom of God until finally when Jesus comes back, he will bring it in its fullness. And every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, and specifically, all the nations will bow before him, and Jesus will be king, and he will be king forever and ever. And so, uh, as in heaven should be on earth. And so, that's our goal, that's our compass, and that's our direction, to establish heaven on earth. We're going to talk about uh, the process of doing that. And as I said, one of the last lessons, I'm going to tell you specifically how you can do that uh, in your family and your place of work.